Hi, family. Happy Wealth Builder Saturday. How are you doing this Saturday? Um, this is our Wealth Builder Saturday, and I am Pastor Carolyn from Tears to Breakthrough Ministries and Conference under the covering, spiritual covering of Felicia Anderson, Apostle Felicia Anderson of the House of Healing International. We are breaking through it together, so come on in, family. Um, again, like I said, this is our Wealth Builder Saturday. And what do we do on our Wealth Builder Saturdays? We come together and we talk and we strategize and we plan on um, building multiple streams of income. And we do that by way of our God talents and gifts. God has given us gifts. He's given us talents. What are we doing with those, right? What are you doing with them? What are you doing with your God talents, your God gifts, right? And so many of us are, you know, we're praying for, you know, um, more. We're praying for promotion. We're praying, we're praying, we're praying for more finances. We're doing all of this praying, but we're not doing the works. How many know that faith without works is dead? And so it's not enough just to pray, but you have to do the work. So I believe in, in this season, God is calling us to do the work. Yes, we're in a pandemic. Yes, many of us are isolated. We're home. This is the perfect time to figure out what it is that you should be doing. People are doing it. I'm telling you, I talk to people every day. Let me just say people in my circle. <laughs> okay, we're making things happen. And yes, we're doing it from home. You know, I, I, mean, I mean, I'm just telling you, you know, I just thank God for putting the right people in my circle, people who, who are confident and, and bold enough to operate in their gifts and talents. They're not afraid. They're unapologetic about it. You know, you know we're, we're not afraid to go out into the marketplace and go into the highways and byways, right, and share what God has given us. God has given each and every one of us gifts and talents. What we are anointed to do, we can get paid to do. And you know what? All the time, it's not about getting paid. Um, but, but if you do it enough, and if you become an expert in that thing, eventually you will get paid, you know, because the people are going to come and they're going to want to pay you for your gifts and talents. That's how it happens, right? And so we come together every Saturday. I just had an amazing session with my mentees and we have collaborated. We have come together and we're making things happen. We're making things happen. And I'm just here to encourage you today to start making some things happen. It first starts with a mindset. We have a wealth mindset, okay? That means that we're not living mediocre lives. We're not making excuses as to why we can't operate in our gifts and talents. We're not afraid to answer the call, right? We're not afraid to do the things that God is calling us to do, right? Because we understand that what we're anointed to do, we can get paid to do. We are confident that that, that we can get paid for the things that God has called us to do. We are confident in our value. We know our worth. We know our value. Right. And so these are the things we talk about when we share nuggets, we share strategies. And so it's always amazing. So if you would like to join me, definitely hit me up and let me know that you want to be a part on Saturday. Um, and yeah, and, and we can do this thing. So today I want to talk to you about your gifts and your talents. There's things that you're sleeping on. You know, there's so many of us that are sleeping on our talents. We're, we're, the title of this is to stop hiding your God talent. Stop hiding your God gift. So many are hiding. You're hiding your gifts. You're hiding your talents. And some of you, God is telling me right now, and I just hear God saying clearly, some of you are hiding behind other people's gifts and other people's talents instead of operating in the gifts and talents that God has given you, right? Stop trying to uh, please everybody to become somebody. I'm going to say that again. Stop trying to please everybody to become somebody. God has already called you to be somebody. He has already called you amazing. He has already called you fearfully and wonderfully made. Okay. He has already called you the head and not the tail. He's already called you those things. You don't need validation. Stop waiting for validation. Stop. Well, this is for somebody out there. Stop waiting for validation and, and start moving towards the things that God has called you to do. Start moving move forward. Okay. And so, um, I don't want to go off too much on that. We're going to be in Matthews, Matthews. Um, let me see, Matthews 25. I'm going to start at verse 14. 
we're going to be talking about the parable of the bags of gold. God has given us some golden nuggets I'm going to share with you today. Uh, we shared a lot today. I'm so excited, right? And don't use this pandemic season as an excuse because i'm telling you there are so many people making so many things happen you know i i believe and in, in this season there are going to be a lot of people a lot of uh, millionaires that are going to be birthed out of this season because they're using their gifts and talents they, some of them are or pushed into using them because they've been not using them in the past but because now they're hungry for real they they're using them they understand that what they're anointed to do they can get paid to do People are getting paid from their home. And that's what I've been doing. And I want to thank Wanda Wallace, my girl in Atlanta. Yes, we're making it happen. We are pouring into people's lives. We're getting people to work. You know, um, we're getting them to tap into their gifts and talents and to learn how to work from home and be, have that discipline to work from home, right? And so you got to, that's the other thing. You got to begin to surround yourself with like-minded people. You cannot... Um, become successful in the things that God is calling you to do. If you're hanging out with people who don't even have a clue, they don't have a clue. And, and simply because they don't agree with something, you know, a God gift or a God talent or a God um, plan, you know, many of you shy away because other people, people around you put, shoot it down or they don't agree with it. Listen, if God gave you a vision, he gave you that vision to see it through. Just because they don't see it, it doesn't matter that they don't see it. God gave you that vision. So with that said, I'm going to just start reading. The parable of the bags of gold. Okay. The title of this message on our Wealth Builder Saturday is Stop Hiding Your God Talent. Stop Hiding Your God Talent. So verse 14, it says, Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. God has entrusted you with gifts and talents, right? Verse 15 says, to one, he gave five bags of gold, to another, two bags, and to another, one bag, each according to his ability each according to his ability. What does that mean? That means that God equips you to do the things that he has called you to do. He, you, he knows that you have the capacity to do that thing. He has equipped you to do it. He has anointed you to do it. And he knows that you can do it. But you just have to do it, right? You have the ability to do those things that God has called you to do. If he called you to it, he's going to bring you through it. Amen? And so, each according to his what? ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work. He put his money to work. He put his money to work, right? I love that. He put his money to work and gained five more bags. I love it. Verse 17, so also the one with two bags of gold gained two more bags but the man who had received one bag went off dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money mm. that means he was just sitting on it that means he had no plans for it he just sat on it he just was lazy with it he was just like mm, i'm just gonna take the easy road take the easy way out i'm not gonna do anything i'm just not gonna move don't worry, I'll have an excuse when he gets back. I'll have an excuse when he gets back. That's like a lot of us. We, 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 we know we're going to have an excuse. We're going to have an excuse. So verse 19, it says, After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. See, God wants to settle some accounts with me, right? The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Oh my God, they're starting to mow lawns around here. Oh my God, I'm going to have to, hopefully you can't hear it. Um, the man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. He put that money to work. He put that money to work. How many know that God is a progressive God? God likes 
us to produce. We, we are to, to become producers, okay? He, if he entrusted you with a gift or a talent, he wants you to produce. He wants you to be productive in that thing, amen? He wants you to be progressive in that thing, not stifled, not just sitting around, not just sitting on it, right? He says, see, I have gained five more. Verse 21, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. So some of you have been praying for God to do more when you haven't even done anything with what God has already given you. He's like, I'm not going to give you any more because you haven't even done anything with what I have already blessed you with. Okay. It goes on to say, come and share your master's happiness. Right? And so verse 22, the man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. Yes, he put his money to work, right? His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. And that's what I want God to say to me. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Isn't that what you would want God to say to you? Well done. Good and faithful servant. You have been faithful. God wants us to be faithful. Say, God wants me to be faithful. He says, you have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. So again, some of you are praying for God to put you, to grow you, to take you to the next level, but you're not even doing anything with what he has already blessed you with, right? You got all kinds of excuses. You're lazy. Come on now. Stop hiding your God talent. Amen. So come and share your master's happiness, he says. Now, verse 24, it says, then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew. Now he comes with all of these excuses. How many of you are like that? Got so many excuses. Well, God, I can't do it because of that. Oh God, well, I can't. It's a pandemic. Well, God, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I just can't. I can't. So then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid. He said he was afraid, just like some of you, just afraid to step out of your comfort zone, just afraid operating in fear instead of operating in excellence, instead of operating in the things that God has called you to operate in, you're operating in fear. So he was fearful. He said he was afraid. He had all these excuses, and then he said he was afraid. Okay, who can relate? Okay, it's okay to be honest because God knows. He know I may not know, but God knows, right? So he says, So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See here what belongs to you. So, in other words, he didn't do anything with it. Where the other people, the other guys, they 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 invested it their money. They, they invested, they made their money work for them. They made that thing work. They made that thing grow. They were productive. So they produced, right? Okay. They were progressive, right? Remember we serve a progressive God. So they, they showed fruit, right? They were working while master was gone, right? They didn't just sit on it and decided, well, master back now, I got all these excuses as to why I'm not operating in my gifts and talents, right? So verse 26, his master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. Mm. So he's like, so let's get this straight. Let's get this straight. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. Well, then you should have put my money. Get this, get this. You should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I return, I would have received it back with interest. God wants a return on his gifts and talents that he has blessed you with. Say God wants a return on his gifts and talents. He wants you to be productive. He wants you to be fruitful and multiply. Okay. That's what we're called to do. Subdue the, subdue the earth, be fruitful and multiply. What are you multiplying? 
What, what are you being productive with? Are you like this dude got all these excuses as to why you can't do anything? It's not enough. I, I can't do it. I've never done that before. I, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Excuses. Staying in your comfort zone. Right? So verse 28, it says, so take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. For whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance and abundance and abundance whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth wow wow what are you doing with your gifts? What are you doing with your talents? What you are anointed to do, you can't get paid to do. You don't have to sit around and beg, borrow, and beg people to help you when you're operating in your gifts and talents, when you're being obedient to God's will concerning you. God has an amazing plan and purpose for each and every one of us. He has not given me talents and gifts and not given you. Absolutely not. He gives all of us gifts and talents. And God wants you to stop hiding your God talent today. He wants you to stop hiding your gifts. Some of you hit them so much, you buried them. You like, like this guy, you just like buried your gifts and talents because you're fearful. Or, or, or maybe somebody has planted some other seeds in your mind and told you you weren't good enough, that you can't do that. How are you gonna do that? You don't have enough money to do that. Or you don't, you know, you don't know how to do that. Nobody in our family has ever done that before. We, we don't know how to do that. We don't, you know, that what, your dreams are too big. Stop listening to the naysayers and listen to God. Stop listening to all those other voices and begin to listen to your God voice. Okay, because God is speaking to you. He absolutely is. Now, with that said, I hear the mowing of the lawn again, so I do apologize for that. I hope you can't hear it, but I do hear it. But what I want to do right now, and I want us to uh, do our um, Wealth Builder Declaration. So say this with me. Say, Lord, I thank you that my family operates in the multiplication anointing, and what I am anointed to do, I can get paid to do. I declare that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for me and I accept my portion. Because I seek you first, God, you are adding everything I need to my life. I am a magnet for passive income. I am worthy of making a lot of money. I am creating unlimited wealth streams. I am walking in wealthy places. I am everything that you have called me to be, God. Everything that God has called you to be. God has called you to be something. God has called you to do some things. There are people out there waiting for you to operate in your gifts. They're waiting for you. You know what? Like we all have experiences. I was talking about this this morning. One of the things I was talking about was how we all have experienced tragedy, loss, you know, hurt, pain, we've all, I mean, those of you who know me, you know my pain to purpose story, my tears to breakthrough story, you know, um, I, 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 I've been raped, mm. I, I, I've lost a baby, you know, I've, I've been an abusive, in an abusive married, I've been divorced, I, I've been all of those things, I could go on and on and on and on and on, but so what, now what? Say that with me. Say, so what? Now what? Yeah, I went through those things, but those things don't define me. And those things don't stop the plans and purposes that God has for me. It might have delayed some stuff. And yeah, sometimes it'll be delayed, but God will not deny you. Not if you put your, put your make that decision, make a resolve that you're going to really be serious about the things that he's calling you to and really apply yourself really put the work in. It's not enough to keep praying and telling me I'm praying about it and I'm waiting for God. No, God is waiting on you. Faith without works is dead. It really is. It's, it's dead. It's dead, right? And so listen, so those things that God has anointed you to do and most of the things that God has called you to do, you're already doing them. But I believe in this season, God is telling us to step up our game, right? 
so that we are able to fund kingdom projects so that when we have a pandemic and people need food and people need help we are we should be the ones on the front line we should be but we can't be the ones on the front line if if we are stuck ourselves if, if we can't pay our own bills if we're waiting for that stimulus check we can't do nothing until we get our stimulus check okay come on now i don't want to make light of that because i know that we are in a very bad it's it's, it's very hard time it's a bad time right now it, it really is it's hard and i get it but I, I believe some people are putting more faith in that stimulus check than they're putting in god but, yeah you know what you know i'm right and so God has given us gifts. He's given us talents. He's giving us the ability to create multiple streams of income. I promise you, he has. He has. And that's what these Wealth Builder Saturdays is all about. So we get together and we talk about that. We, we share nuggets. We share strategies. And we come up with ways to make it happen. So now that we're in a pandemic, all of those who follow suit and positioned themselves months ago, a year ago, we are now on the front line helping people who need help. Our fridge is stocked. We don't have to worry about food, thank God. Our bills are paid, praise God. I thank God that I'm able to pay my bills, right? But it's because I already positioned myself in advance. You don't wait for a crisis to happen to position yourself. Um, no, you should already be in position. And honey, this is, guess what? This is, this is not, I believe this is only the beginning. So we don't even know what's to come. So what are you going to do with those gifts and talents? I'm going to say it again. What you are anointed to do, you can get paid to do. Stop sitting on your gifts. Stop sitting on your talents. Stop hiding your talents. Stop burying your talents, right? God wants you to use those things to, to, to be able to, to position yourself to fund kingdom projects. Yes, we are wealth builders, and it starts with our mind. We, we, we have a wealth mindset. It starts there. And that means we don't make excuses about, um, um, you know, being good stewards of our money. We don't make excuses about, you know, doing what it takes, you know, um, to make it happen. No, we don't. We're bold. We're, we're marketplace ministers amen we're in the marketplace i'm a marketplace of ministry i am that means that we're doing stuff outside of the walls of the church because a lot of times that's if you only do things within the walls of the church and you really preach into the choir the harvest is plentiful out there yeah and the first thing somebody wants when they when they want help they just want help the rest of it will come later you know um, I can't really talk to you about Christ if you are hungry in your stomach, growling, you need food. No, I need to feed you physically first, give you some food, and then later on we can talk. We can talk later after you get your stomach full, get your belly full, we can talk later. Because you can't even think if you're hungry, you can't think. And so I want to encourage you to stop sitting on your gifts and talents, those things that you, don't, you have the ability because if God called you to it, you have the ability. He has equipped you for it. What you are anointed to do, you can get paid to do. I promise you. Um, if you would like to join us on our Wealth Builder Saturdays, uh, they are powerful and amazing. I'm telling you, big things are coming out of this. When this pandemic is over, we're going to be, we, we already making change. We're already change agents. We're making so much change. If you, oh my God, I'm just going to use uh, Wanda, my girl in Atlanta, as an example. You know, we've been, doing uh, work at home job readiness training. We've been building people's confidence, building up people's self-esteem, pouring into them because a lot of people are so stressed out right now and broken right now. They need hope. We've been giving hope to those who thought there was no hope. And when we're able to do that because we are in marketplace ministry, right? So we're, we're, we're supposed to be in a class setting and we're pouring into people and we're ministering to people. And then by the end of the class, they ministering to us. Go figure, <laughs> right? And it's not even about, because sometimes we get stuck. Uh, God is just telling me to say this. Sometimes we get stuck in the church because we, we want to always preach to the choir. So we don't get stuck on the fact that they might have another belief system. Nah, we don't. We want to meet them where they are. We want to we fulfill their need 
and, and right now their need is money. So we want to equip them to, to, to build up their skill set, to build up their confidence, to make them, to make them bold so that they can be in this, this marketplace and be able to put food on their tables, right? And so we're doing some amazing things right now, even in this pandemic. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? It's just amazing. I could go on and on and on because I'm just so excited how God has blessed me to be around people who, who are not afraid to operate in their gifts and talents, who are not afraid to be in the marketplace, who, who are not afraid to do what needs to be done. We are called to be salt and light. We are. But I'm, I'm be honest with you. People don't want to hear all of your excuses. Like that dude I had so many excuses as to why he didn't do anything except bury, the t bury, bury his gold. He only buried it. He didn't do anything with it. People don't want to hear your excuses. They want to hear how you can help them. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the truth. And so if you can't even help yourself, what, how are you going to help me? How, how are you going to help me? You can't even help yourself. Right? God is calling us to greater. And, 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 I, and I just believe that. God is calling us to greater. And we can be greater because the greater one lives on the inside of us. And I'm just going to leave you with that because I could go on and on and on with this. I'm, look, I'm, I feel like I can go through another class today. I'm ready. I'm ready. And that's the other thing. We got to be ready in season and out of season. No more excuses. No more excuses. Stop hiding your talents. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at tears in a bottle eight at gmail.com. That's tears in a bottle, the number eight at gmail.com. I'll see you the next time. This is Pastor Carolyn from Tears to Breakthrough Ministries. Um, I am your purpose pusher. And some of you need to be pushed because you're not doing anything. Be blessed. Be encouraged and not discouraged. I pray above all things that you will prosper, that you will be in health, even as your soul prospers. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.